Hi, I'm Victoria Nunley, editor for premium content on churchmilitant.com, and welcome to our preview for Houses Built on Sand. Now you know the parable, right? Two men, two houses, one on sand, one on rock, and a huge storm comes, and then only one house and a pile of rubble remain. What exactly is the house built on rock? That house symbolizes the Catholic Church, and the houses built on sand, those symbolize the heresies, the false religions and beliefs that have led thousands, millions away from the one true faith, salvation, and heaven. And that's what this show is about. Join our host, Charles Hornbacher, for 13 episodes, plus a special bonus episode, so 14 episodes, each dealing with a heretic and his heresy. Learn about these men, what they did, and how you cannot do that, because that would be bad. So take a few moments and watch this clip from this week's episode of Houses Built on Sand. And if you enjoy it, please sign up for a premium account. It's only $10 a month, and you get access to hundreds of hours of programming. At the Diet of Worms, <laughs> that's not where you stuff your face with wiggly things you find in your garden, but rather a meeting held at the town of Worms in Germany. Anyway, at the Diet of Worms in April of 1521, Luther was asked if he stood by what he had written in his various books and pamphlets. Luther said that he did in a famous speech Unless I am convinced by the testimony of the scriptures or by clear reason, for I do not trust either in the Pope or in the councils alone, since it is well known that they have often erred and contradicted themselves, I am bound by the scriptures I have quoted and my conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything since it is neither safe nor right to go against conscience. May God help me. Amen. That's pretty clear. At this point, heresy was not just rejection of the church. It was rejection of the whole social order. Heresies were dangerous because they could make people rise up against their rulers, starting wars and rebellions. It wasn't like today where people believe in crazy things but carry on their lives relatively peacefully. Heretics started armed insurrections. The emperor issued a decree making Luther an outlaw. Now, that isn't a masked stranger riding into town and killing the bad guy in a shootout like in a Western. No, that meant he had no legal protection, that it was a crime to give him food or water, and that it was perfectly legal to kill him. It was pretty much a death sentence, but Luther didn't die because he had protectors. Prince Frederick snatched him up and hid him in Wartburg Castle, wearing a false beard. Luther wore the beard, not the castle. He continued to write and attack the church and her doctrines. By this point, the Protestant revolt, what they call the Reformation, was well underway. Luther's ideas had been adopted by many of his former brothers in the monastery and elsewhere. They had stopped saying private mass. Some went as far as to call mass an abomination. 